Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Kim Duramo, and I want to introduce Dr. Christine Bjorndal. Um, I had done a Facebook Live specifically looking at depression and suicidality because I was so inspired by something I read that Christine had, Christina had written um, about her experience with a suicide attempt and the insight that she gained and um, the, the, the different perspective she's in now as a result. I know there are a lot of people struggling and suffering with depression and suicidality more than ever in the planet. And I know this is a really important topic to look at. And so for someone who's, who's really come through it, um, I, I've certainly had depression for years and years and years, decades of my life and moved through so much struggle. Um, but I know that Christina can speak from an even deeper perspective, actually having gone in that direction of a suicide attempt. So I was really, really inspired for her to share on this. Um, and you can watch the, the part one we did, which was the Facebook Live, which kind of is a lead up to, to what I want to share here with Christina. Um, but Christina is now a naturopathic doctor and um, is, is assisting people on a much deeper level because of what she's anchored in through resolving, not, not fighting against or, you know, kicking the habit of a depression, but actually coming through a true integration to something higher. So welcome, Christina, and thank you so much for letting me interview you on this. Yeah, no, thanks for having me. And, and I, I'm grateful that you were, you know, you were touched by that article that I wrote. And uh, so just to to for people to understand i um i've had a lot of challenges with my mental health and started in high school with an eating disorder uh, and then when i moved into university i found myself in a place that i'd never been before which was quite anxious and debilitated by depression and having suicidal thoughts and i started an antidepressant at that time and a few months after that i spiraled out of control and ended up in another place that I'd never been before, which was having a delusional, psychotic, manic episode. And so then I was given the diagnosis of bipolar disorder type one. And what I did with that is I pretty much stuffed it as far down as I could possibly put it. And I didn't want to have anything to do with it, didn't want anyone to know about it. So as a result, I was wearing this mask most of the time, this overachieving mask that, you know what, I've got it all together. You're never going to see me sweat. I'm, you know, Superwoman from Perfectionville. But meanwhile, I was dying on the inside. And so eventually I had a suicide attempt. And it was really the, the thoughts that constantly plagued me, these thoughts that were Set, you know, this inner critic that was telling me that I was worthless, that I was you no know, good, there was, you know, it was a waste of space. And uh, eventually I succumbed to those thoughts. And obviously the suicide attempt didn't work because I'm still here. But what I was left with was I was, um, I was in a coma and I had kidney failure. I was on dialysis, told I would need a kidney transplant. And that really was the turning point for me because I, had, I was at the bottom and I certainly wasn't happy that that attempt didn't work. And a friend gave me a book to read called A Return to Love by Marianne Williamson. Yeah, and in that book, there's a quote on surrender, which goes along these lines. Uh, surrender is not about letting go. But surrender is, oh my gosh, now I'm drawing a blank on how the quote goes exactly. So surrender is not about breaking out of anything. It's a gentle melting into who we really are. So we let down our armor. So we take off the mask. That's all God needs is just one sincere surrendered moment when love matters more than anything. And we realize that nothing else really matters at all. And so it was that quote about love that opened my eyes because I had been at war with myself up until that point. I, I, I hated, I resisted, as you were talking about in the, in the earlier video, I resisted this label that I had been given. And I felt a lot of shame around it. I did not, I was the farthest from loving and accepting it. And so that's really been the work that I've been doing for the last 30 plus years is working on how do I develop a loving, compassionate relationship with myself? Because ultimately, 
the most important relationship you're going to have with anybody is the relationship that you have with yourself. You're with you longer than you're going to be with anybody on this planet. And it's been a journey. And I know you mentioned Byron Katie, that's that she's someone that I teach to all of my patients as well. It's not every thought you have is true. Right. But yet we, we, tend to subscribe to these thoughts and we have to take a step back and recognize that there is more to you than just your thoughts. And also Christiane Northrup says that we're the culmination of the seven generations that have gone before us. So is this even yours? And the other sort of real turning point for me was understanding this concept of soul contracts, which might be a little out there for people, but just sort of in a nutshell, just to understand, you know, because for me, remember, I, I was wearing this overachieving mask, right? So you would think, right, as uh, in plan, anyway, that I would overachieve in every area of my life, but yet I'm still here on the planet. And so, you know, why is that? And this, the way that I've gathered um, an understanding or an answer for myself around that is this idea of soul contracts. And you mentioned this as well in a, in a way in your earlier video, you, you know, you said, well, you're going to have to deal with it in some lifetime. So you might as well take it on now. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the idea that, you know, maybe my soul has succumbed to suicide in a previous life. And in this lifetime, the goal here, the spiritual, um, lesson or that I'm to learn in soul university is how to love and accept myself and to not succumb to suicide in this lifetime. And that's what keeps me here. And I won't know the answer to that question, but I, I and, and there was an earlier comment uh, on the video as well, the first video uh, about suicidal thoughts. And I just want to mention what I do with those now is I, you know, first of all, we recognize that I'm having that thought but I no longer follow that thought because that's a problematic thought. And so use that as a red flag that in that moment, you're not loving yourself. So it's a call for love actually. So shift your perspective on the suicidal thought as uh, by fueling it with more negativity. Let's see if we can move to use it as this red flag that, Oh my gosh, I'm actually, thinking the worst I could do, think of myself and can we move to being compassionate to understanding that you're again you're here for some reason there's it's, you know it's very difficult when you think about conception right I mean it, it's it you know you're here for some reason and so and maybe maybe it's just as simple as what I said you're just here to learn how to love and accept yourself so that's the sort of 52 year history in five minutes for you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, and that piece about that lesson, it actually requires that we have some level of awareness that we are not our physical body because this lesson and the meaning of like, why the hell am I in this much suffering will never be found in the physical realm solely in the physical realm. Like there's nothing that's worth going through that. Oh, well, someday you're going to have this amazing life and it's all going to be worth it. And you'll have a, a nice house, a nice car and lots of fun with your great lover. And it's like, screw that. There, there's nothing that's worth suffering like this. But we have to begin to realize we are not our physical body and our physical life. We are a vibrational being. We are pure consciousness. And then we can access the awareness of like, oh, there's a much bigger reason why I'm being asked to have this much willingness and this much compassion for something that's unthinkable right now in this moment to meet this pain. Mm -hmm. I can't, even if I don't understand it, that it can have some awareness of the bigger picture that absolutely is so unbelievably worth it for, for who I am becoming as a, a being, not just as Kim DeRamo doing this thing on the planet, but something that has to go way beyond that. Yeah. You yeah, know, an absent in medicine, and I think that's a big, big reason why we're miserably failing at at helping people with depression and suicidality. Absolutely, I mean, basically in medicine, you know, what what I explain to patients and what I've talked about in the book I've written, which is called Beyond the Label, is you know, there's four aspects to us, right? Physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. And our Western system is focused primarily on that physical level. And there's not as much emphasis or consideration given to the mental, the emotional, and the spiritual. And if we're going to help people, we have to look at all four levels, not just the physical level, 
And, and at that, I think we're, we're not quite getting it right because we're only mentioning pharmaceuticals as an option. I'm not saying not to take an antidepressant, I'm, but I'm just saying that we want to figure out what the root of the problem is. And it could lie in the neuroendocrine system from a physical level. It could be related to hormones. There's so, you know, there's other factors to consider. Uh, and so... Well, and like you said, it could be really related to generations past of where this heaviness yeah. has not yet been resolved. And you are the one who's being asked to meet this with the compassion that maybe only you have the bandwidth for. And that right now at this time on the planet where the human frequency has increased, we're, we're actually accessing higher levels of wisdom, love, compassion than ever before, that now is the time for this to be resolved for you and for your lineage and for all around you. And when we don't have a perspective or worldview that makes space for our connection to other beings, for, other, for those who have come before us, um, none of that would make any sense. That's right. Yeah, and I just wanted to touch on something else that you met, that you mentioned as well um, in the in the earlier video. In that, uh, what you resist persists, and so Jeff Foster has been someone that uh, I've I've listened to quite a bit. And one of the things he talks about is we want to look at these emotions. Like a lot of times, again, we're trying to get rid of depression. We're trying to get rid of yes. sadness, anger. Yes. Right. We're trying to um, yeah. We're just we're just we just we don't want to own it. And he said, you know, if we look at all of these emotions as lost children, and if a lost child is knocking on your door that's hungry and tired and, and needs care, you're not going to slam the door in that child's face. You're going to welcome it in. And so sadness and depression doesn't want to be healed. It wants to be held by you, right? It wants to be allowed in. And it's interesting because up until then, if you think about your depression, if you if you've been in resistance to it and just wanting it to leave versus looking at the lesson within. And so for me, you know, it took me hitting, hitting rock bottom to get that lesson. And, it, and again, the lesson it was very simple for me. How can I move to love and compassion for myself? And it's, you know, it's not been an easy journey. It's, it's definitely had lots of, little bumps along the way, but with each bump I've had, I reflect back and I look and I say, okay, what can I learn from that experience? So I know if you know, if you're listening to this and you're suffering, you know, just, just know that there are practitioners out there that are ready and willing and, and want to help you. And it, I know it's difficult to reach out for help sometimes, but it's really, sometimes this is the medicine that you need. Yeah. And, and having someone who's been willing to meet their own pain is for me, that's the essential component because I remember going through that depression and all kinds of things and practitioner after practitioner, like the best Harvard doctors and, and not really feeling like they were really there with their own self and, and, and knowing who they were and anchoring and being aware with compassion of their own pain. So it would just be like this head to head discussion and never really felt like I could receive the, the guidance I needed um, but that's really an essential piece. Is this a practitioner who's willing to own their own pain, who has, who has walked their own journey, not just the idea of it helping you get through it, but, but really actually ushering themselves through it in a way that they can truly guide you. Right. Yes. Yeah. And I think, that, you know, I, I, I feel like we're looking at the wrong organ in, in mental health, right? We're focused very much so on the brain, but I think it's a disconnect from the heart, right? A hundred percent. Right. So, 100%. So just, um, you know, the more that people can move into, as you, I think you mentioned the breath and, and um, moving away from, you know, just getting out of your head. You know, Annie Lamont says that her, her head is like a bad neighborhood. She doesn't, she doesn't really want to go there alone, right? So, you know, sometimes our thoughts are, are, are very, you know, they're, 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 it's part of our egoic mind and there's this this piece that's called our pain body and it, it kind of has this incentive to feels like it needs to protect us but it also can keep us stuck and so the more that you can recognize again as you said that you know you're not you're more than your thoughts you're more than your thoughts and you don't have to believe every thought you have right thank you thank you so yeah. much i just want to say a real um it's really an honor and, and thank you for 
choosing to stay here and be here and live full out and move through this instead of, you know, trying to get beyond it or, or get away from it. Uh, because it's really that courage and strength and compassion that you've anchored into your body and your life that is the beacon for others to do the same and the strength for others to do the same. So thank you. It really matters. Yeah, well, thank you as well. It's important, you know, it's, 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 first of all, it's, it's not that often you hear a medical doctor mention homeopathy, which I think is amazing, and for your vulnerability and grace as well. So I appreciate you having me and I hope, you know, people have questions, just feel free yes. to Yes, where do they find you and where do they find your book? It's, it's on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. Beyond the label. Yeah, yeah, 10 steps to improve your mental health. Awesome. And, um, and then my website, I guess, is probably a great place. So just my name, like drchristinabjorndal.com. But we okay. probably have to put that in the comment. Yeah. It's B-J-O-R-N-D-A-L. Yeah, and then C-H for Christina. Christina with a C-H. Okay, and yeah. I'll include that in the comments too. Yeah. Awesome. So glad we met and connected. Yeah. This will be something I'd really want to have recorded because I just felt such an inspiration when I read your article. Yeah, and we I'll try to post that too. If you tag me, then I'll post that article. So awesome. Yeah. All right. Lots of love and lots of love and compassion to everyone who's here who's listening in whatever way. Um our intention is that this is some contribution to your personal expansion, depth in in your own compassion and love, and truly, truly expanding in your journey to living a, a, a beautiful life of true fulfillment.